Hi, everybody. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, whatever is more appropriate from where you are at the moment. So you see that there's been a change of setting. So today's lecture, will, I, I will be given from tablet and I will try to save the notes and send it to you. In the meanwhile, some of you might have noticed that on the, on the Matrix channel, I've already sent you all the references, including both last lecture material and today's material. And at the very end of this lecture, I will also send you a temporary PDF file where you will find all the equations that we have been discussing and uh, all the concepts or most of the concepts that we have, we have covered. And also you will find additional references. Okay? So today I will be discussing a few things. I mean, the first, uh, it's, uh, it's connected to what we, to what we discussed last time uh, and uh, what we had, we had this concept of partition function. Let me see. Partition function. Oops, sorry for that. And what we want, want, what we started doing was to define a data structure corresponding to this partition function. which entailed two questions. The first one is to find a proper embedding space. And we, we already discussed that. Oops, sorry. And the second one was instead related to the characterization of a feature space. that we have not discussed and will be the, the starting point of to, today's lecture. And remember, everything we will be doing here will be done in the context of this very simple three site is the model. Okay. Because it's the one where we can write down everything explicitly in a simple manner. Okay, so this will be the first part of the lecture. Oops, sorry. Then we will do, we will move to the, to the second part and we will discuss how we generate these corresponding feature spaces with stochastic methods. And this will be doing in two parts. First, I will give you a very, very short reminder about Markov chains. That is at the heart of computational, what is a feature space? It's a feature, a space of your features. It's a space that contains the characteristics that you, you want to try to probe. You will see later in the example, uh, I think uh, the example is uh, self-explanatory in this respect. So, and we will see the Markov chains and we will connect them to one of the most used methods to probe stochastic properties of partition functions, which are Monte Carlo methods. Those are not the only methods that one can use for our purposes, especially if one moves away from the classical case and start discussing the quantum case. There are different techniques that can be used to do exactly the same stuff that we have discussed, that we will be discussing today, like variational methods based on tensor networks or even exact methods, but we will be forgetting about them for the sake of time and simplicity. So once we, we will have defined Markov chains in the context of Monte Carlo, we will illustrate what is the main challenge in uh, defining meaningful stochastic representations of partition function 
classical partition functions. And this main change is, is so-called critical slowing down. Today will be another trade line here, critical. And then we will see that it is actually possible to solve this problem in a, in a specific set of problems out of which you can imagine the 2D easy model belongs to. And the methods that solve critical slowing down essentially are called cluster algorithms. Okay, so this is, these are the, the, the three topic we'll be discussing today. Okay. So let us then start again from characterization of partition functions. Oops. Mm -hmm. I need to clear this, sorry, oops. So for some reason, page is not moving. Let me try one sec. Okay. Again, do like this. I will place everything. So partition functions. So yesterday we have seen So what was the embedding space of these three sites easy model? Okay. Just a quick reminder, we said, okay, every configuration is just labeled by the three possible values that the spin can, can have. We can label our configuration sigma one, sorry. Sigma one, sigma two, sigma three. And in order to describe this feature space, we just use a cube. Okay, that was the most natural thing to, to do. And now let us draw this cube properly. Right. Not a great cube, but we will make it work. Okay, could I'm somebody so please sorry. show the matter? Yeah, please. Uh, is it possible to say again what is embedding the space? Yes, the embedding space is the space that contains our data. Okay, so remember what what our partition function is, okay? So we wrote an example of possible partition function. This will have to be sum e to the minus b e, and then you will have a sum over possible configurations, okay, of this object. And you can decide that the configuration that appear in, in your model are just sum of, the configurations that are possible, for instance, you can add uh, configuration up, up, up with a coefficient uh, 0 0.2 plus the configuration which is up, down, down with a coefficient 0 0.5 plus a configuration which is down, up, down with a coefficient 1.2. Okay, this will be reasonable partition function. Well, maybe not very reasonable, but tool partition function. Then the embedding space will just be the space on the door which you picture your partition function, okay? In this case, this will be represented by numbers 
that corresponds to typical configuration. So each configuration lives in a space, which is, if you want, in the case of this model, nothing but the configuration space. Okay? If you want, you can think about it as the configuration space. Thank you. Cheers. The reason why I did not use the word configuration space from the very beginning is that, for instance, if you think about ex extending some of the concept that we discussed today to the quantum mechanical problem, then one has to be more careful because, and it's a long story, but then it's not configuration space that you have to consider anymore. Okay? Okay. So our embedded space is made out of these vectors. And now if we want to represent a given state, we can decide, for instance, that the state on the bottom left of our uh, cube, sorry, somebody, I will have to mute somebody. Uh, so the state on the bottom left is nothing but the state where all the spins are down. And you can imagine that if you move one on the right, then the third, the, the first spin changes. This is the speed up. Down. If you move again, uh, but now in the y direction, you are flipping the second spin. And if you move now in the z direction, you are flipping the third spin. Okay. So in, in this simple representation, you see moving in this direction has flipped the first spin, moving along this direction has flipped the second spin, and moving vertically has flipped the third spin. Okay. So that's our embedded space, and, and that is, it is very simple. Okay. So in principle now, let us try an example. We want to depict where the state down, down, up is. Where it is, okay, the first spin is down, so it has to lie on the bottom. The second spin is down, so it has to lie on the y equal to zero line. But the third spin is up, so this would be the state. Okay. Each point here corresponds to a state. But then some of you asked already last time, is, uh, asked the following question. I mean, now if we have a partition function, in general, I mean, this, the, the weights in front of this different state will be different. So how do we now describe the partition function inside this embedded space? And this is exactly what we will be discussing now. How there could be third spin. There is a third spin in the sense that this is this third guy here. Okay. Is it clear or what do you mean by third spin or third value of the spin? like in a POTS model. So something which is up, down, and zero. Was this your question? Get it. Uh, I got it or you, you got it? I don't know. Okay, good, that is fine. I mean, maybe, I just want to mention that whatever we do now is spin one half indeed, okay? But it can be extended to arbitrary spins and even to continuous variables. The point is when we will do that, we will lose the simple intuition that we get from the easy model. And actually in one of the references that I sent you, there is easy model, three state pots model, eight state pots model, XY models. So all the different types of possible data sets uh, that come out of spins, spin variables. So now we want to define our feature space. Right? And to do that, I have to completely erase this. Okay. Feature, feature space. Okay. And the idea of this feature space is because of this specific uh, coefficients that we have in our partition function, what we want to do now is instead of having something that fully characterizes it, we will characterize it only stochastically. 
So, so we will give up the full knowledge of the partition functions or give up full knowledge and replace it with a stochastic representation. Now, how do we do this in practice for our simple three site easy model? Okay. Remember, that's our okay, reference point. So the idea is the following. So we define a number of states that we plan to sample. Okay. States that we sample. States here you can replace with configurations. Okay. And this number in the note, I wrote it as N, capital N. Uh, no, the feature space has nothing to do with phase space. No, not in our context, at least. Hmm? Let, you will see it now how we define it. Cheers. Cheers. So we sample M states. And then what we do, we collect several, we collect several of of such the sets. Feature space equal to configuration space? No, let me finish, okay? But they're they are of course very closely connected, yeah? But they're not the same thing. Okay? So now remember what we have. Uh, now our uh, embedding space is made out of these strange squares. that form this cube that we had before. So now what we do, we, we, we take a finite number M of samples. For, in our case, we can take M equal to three. You don't have to do it. Typically, M is actually very large, but we do it for our purposes. And then we sample our partition function, but it's not that we just take three random states. We take states with probability distribution, which is the one defined by our partition function. Okay. E to the minus beta E. This has to be normalized, but it doesn't really matter, okay? So that it's a probability distribution. So what does it what does it imply? Okay. That now suppose that we work at temperature which is much smaller than the corresponding critical temperature, or in our units, this is much more than one, which is the coupling strength. Okay? Now, what are the states that we will sample most of the time in this regime? If the temperature is really temperature is really low, you will mostly sample the states which have the lowest energy. Very good. Low energy. So this implies that our state with only three samples is likely eating this guy here and this guy here, which are the state up, 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 and down, 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 most of the times. Okay. The other states, exactly, all spin up or all spin down. Correct. 
Perfect. Yeah? So most of the time, we will not be exploiting the fact that the configuration space, the embedded space is three-dimensional. We will only see two points. Okay. But two points, okay, now you can tell me three points out of eight is not a great, is not a great set to define a geometry. But with a bit of wishful thinking, I mean, you can understand that two points define a line. Okay. So most of the time we will just sample lines. Of course, there will be some specific cases where this is not happening. We are also sampling something outside. Okay. So, but out of the states we sample, we will get oops, mostly configurations up, 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 down, down, down. And we will just repeat it several times. And this will define our feature space. Oops, sorry. Future space. So you see there is a connection, of course, between the feature space and the configuration space. The, configure, the, the feature space is embedded okay, in the configuration space, in the sense that feature space is a collection of configurations, if you want. But this is not a random collection of configurations. It's a collection of, of configurations that are selected by a sampling that is dictated by the probability distribution that is the very same one that defines the partition function, e to the minus beta e. Okay. And you can imagine to apply the very same procedure to every other well-defined probability distribution. It's just that in our case, energy is the most significant one. Now, what we're interested in when we do data mining of the many-body problem, we are interested in properties of the feature space. Okay. What we want to is properties. Of the feature. I have a bit of a problem with the letter U. I'm sorry for that. But aren't these two states in the thermodynamic limit topologically separated? We are not talking about thermodynamic limit yet. Okay? Thermodynamic limit will come in the last lecture. Now we are only seeing a simple three set example. And to the best of my knowledge, this is not corresponding to any many body physics, but it's just to give you a physical interpretation of what is going on. Here, for low temperature case, you have chosen m equal to two. Ah, that's a good point. You caught me, okay? In principle, I said, okay, there are only two points here. Maybe one of them is repeated if I sample more times. Okay? You can imagine. Uh, indeed, this is actually tricky. Okay? Repetitions will be a problem, but I might in this under the carpet. But I, I, write, I write in the slide, check repetitions. And the reason why it will be a problem, oops. Okay. It will be discussed by Alex, I don't think next week, but next to next. Okay, but it's a very good point. Here I've chosen n equal to three and I sample one of these states maybe twice. So I forgot that I sample it twice, but it will be important later on to be careful about not sampling points more than twice. You will see that if I have a small system, you always sample points more than twice. So this is a bit problematic. However, if you start looking at the many body system and we will be looking at easy models where you have 100,000 to million spins, the probability of checking, getting the same configuration twice, unless you really go to zero temperature, to temperatures which are 10 to the minus 14, it's not there. Okay, so at the many body level, this repetition problem will not appear. Markov chain Monte Carlo will come into play in the construction field. Very good. Okay. Uh, one of you has already understood where we are going. We will utilize, I mean, now we can sample our configuration almost by hand because we can write down everything. But at some point, we will not be able to do that. It will be fundamental 
to have a method that allows to allow us to stochastically sample a system, and then we will have to use Markov chains in Monte Carlo. It's exactly what we will be needing for to generate our feature space. Now you can also be forward thinking and say, why the hell do you have to do Markov chain Monte Carlo? Can't you just do an experiment and collect snapshots of a partition function? Well, indeed, this is actually true. Some of the things that I will be telling you are not only applicable to numerical experiments, but they can also be applied to real experiments. Okay? There is, however, one fishy point in doing this, is that when we do numerics, we have all errors under control, and we do Markov chain Monte Carlo specifically, we have all errors under control, thanks to the fact that we are just evaluating statistically integrals. So we, we know how these series are generated. So apart from memory, that will be a problem that we will be discussing, everything is mathematically extremely well defined. When you have experiments, what can happen is that there are systematic errors that you are not aware of, okay? Because you are collecting samples and maybe that day the metro has been running a bit too fast and the magnetic field in the underground was a bit higher and then your atoms don't behave nicely or you are doing a bio experiment and there is a reactant that is not, has not perfectly thermalized uses, I don't know. Okay? There may be some systematics. And systematics, when we discuss about, when we, Think about their roles in, in a many body problem. In particular, we've seen in our context here, they can create outliers. And outliers can be problematic because they can hinder the interpretation of the features we are interested in because we are not able to decrypt them anymore. Okay? So that's why we will mostly focus on Monte Carlo. Okay, so now I've shown you the feature space for the for the low temperature phase. We can try to do the same trick now for high temperature. Okay. Now it's a very simple exercise. Let, oops, let me let me erase this and now. Uh, okay. So we start looking at the high temperature case. If we take T much larger than Tc, so, and we reconstruct our very nice cube. So what will happen in practice is that whenever I have a finite number of samples, okay, my first sample gets this guy, this one and this one. Then I take another sample and my next sample take this, take this again and take this. Then I get another sample and this other sample will get this, this and this and so on and so forth. So we are spanning the full cube because there is no energy selection anymore at very high temperatures all the weights are of the same order, which is one divided by a number of configurations. All the probabilities in this case will be one over eight for us. So all states are equally probable. Equally probable. So that you see now that there is rather fundamental difference in the feature space of high temperature partition functions of these three settings, this model, and the low temperature phase. So what is one, what is one difference that strikes us, okay? And it's important to understand that because we will not be looking at very fine tuned effects. We want to study many body effects. So we, we want to have features that are visible, clear. Well, there is one, that it is clear. I mean, remember what I told you before. I mean, when we were looking at very low temperature, we had that all our points were just sitting on a line. Okay. So T much smaller than TC, what we had is really a line. Instead, now, if we have T much larger than TC, essentially what we're doing, let me try to use this. 
we are covering the full 3D structure, right? So what we indeed have and then is a cube. And what is the most striking difference between a cube and a line? It's just you see that it's their dimensionality. Okay. And indeed, what we will be looking at is a specific quantity, which is called intrinsic dimension of a data set. Oops, apologies. And we will be calling this quantity ID. And what I've tried to show you now in this simple example is that ID is equal to one for T much smaller than TC. And IZ is equal to three for T much larger than TC. So ID is a simple proxy to distinguish phases which are fundamentally different. Okay, already in this three side PC model, we're talking about phases. It is really not something we can do as was questioned already by someone. So I had a question. Uh, can we use a random walk on this space to collect the item? Yes, it is absolutely reasonable to use random walk in that case. It's actually equivalent to an equal weight Markov chain. But you will have to use a random walk with a very, very large. Uh, if you do many body, you will have to use a random walk with a very, very large working time because otherwise you start having memory effects. And memory effects are not good to create statistically uncorrelated samples. Good. So we have defined a feature space. And so now I would like to take a very short break, like uh, two minutes also because I need some water. Uh, and during this break, feel free to add questions to the Zoom chat. And we will start the next part of the lecture by, by discussing your questions. So we come back in uh, three minutes. Okay, so I think three minutes. Okay, three minutes have just passed now. So let me start by reading some of the questions that you guys have asked and uh, comment on that. Okay. So the first question is which is the ID on TC, the critical temperature? 
Well, let me make two comments here. First, we have a we have a finite small system, so there is really no critical temperature. There is no phase transition. But this will be the, the, the question that we will be asking when we start many body. And then it will be highly non-trivial to understand what happened to TC at the critical point. And I will show you at the next lecture. So this you have to wait a bit. Can you explain ID again? Yes, I will do it. Okay. Even though, uh, okay, be, be, remind uh, yourself that I'm not giving you a rigorous full-fledged explanation of what the idea of a data space is. I'm just giving you simple intuition of what it is. So essentially ID is the, you can see it as follows. You can see ID, intrinsic dimension, as the minimum number of variables that you need to describe your space. Minimum number of variables. Of course, they have to be independent, yeah? To describe your space. Uh, set space, whatever. Okay. Now, if I have a line, I only need one variable, is the position along the line. Okay. If I have a cube, in order to tell you where you are on the cube, I, don't, I cannot specify a single point. I have to specify three points direction x, y, and z, or if I'm in continuum, distance from the center and two angles. Okay? So you can see it as idea is really the minimum number of, of variables that are needed to describe the set, independent variables, of course. I hope that is clear. How we can get the TC in this space? No, this is, uh, again, a good question. You will see the last lecture. What if t equal to tc? Again, you will see in the layer. It's good that all of you ask this because it means that you will be interested in the last lecture. Okay. For t much larger than tc, why all configurations have the same probability? Well, the reason is the following: is that they don't have mathematically the same probability. But what you can do, you can at very high temperature you can expand this exponential. Okay. Very high temperature implies beta very small. So this will be approximately one minus beta e okay, plus blah, blah, blah. So you see that the leading order in this correction is energy independent, which implies that the dominant contribution to the probability of the states will be the same for all states. Professor, can you repeat the part why we have to give up full knowledge to create official space? Okay, the reality is that we don't have to give up. Okay? The reality is that it is, uh, there is no conceptual reason why to give up, but there is a sim very simple practical reason that, that typically, when we deal with a problem which is very complicated, you will not know the full, the full feature space of the partition function to start with. Because computing all the coefficients in front of the, that make up the partition function will not be possible. It's exponentially hard. So I think it's more of a practical reason why we need a full knowledge rather than um, fundamental. There, are also, there is also a fundamental reason that I will forget for. There is another question here. That is, line for t much more than tc has only two points and the cube has, up, has eight. Then why is the dimension one, three? Since we can only sample finite from it. It's just to classify. Yes, it is just to classify. You are correct, of course. If I have two points, I can pick whatever. Right? But it's just to give you an understanding that in this simple space, one can have these simple structures. Now, if you want to do an example where you can see a true line and a true, and a true cube in a simple three-site model, you can, you can take the three-site XY model. Not, not 3D, of course. It's too complicated. Huh? Three. 
side x, y, y. Because there you have continuum, continuous variable. So the, the configuration space is really uh, R3. So then you can really see lines and cubes. And actually, this is what we do in one of the archive references that I've put on the elements channel. Okay? So if you're interested. Ha. Is there some relation between the trace dimension with the fact? Well, there is, of course. You are, this is a very good point. Uh, I don't want to elaborate, in, uh, elaborate on it further uh, since I, I'm not so sure uh, most of you are familiar with the fractal dimension. Alex might be discussing this, okay? but there is a very, very strong relation. Okay. Then, what is ID at t much more than tc for n body problem? This we will be discussing in lecture seven. So this is really one of the questions we will be answering. What happens? Yeah. So it is useful to use stochastic representations for many spins. Yes, it is. It will be super useful. It will be fundamental actually, you, because you cannot handle anything exactly. Very very few things exactly. So you will have to rely on a stochastic representation for many spins automatically. Perfect. Okay. So now let me. Uh, now we will have to go a bit faster on the next point, but I don't care to be honest because uh, uh, I prefer to answer your questions. And if you want to study the cluster algorithm, I will send you the notes and you can study that in detail. But now we have to discuss a bit Markov chains. Okay. Oops, it looks like it's not liking the writing. Markov chains. Let me try to use the same notation I have. Okay. Now, let us briefly uh, review a few definitions. I mean, suppose that you have a set of configurations. And I will call them x1, x2, blah, 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 xn. Hmm. Now, we denote a series of, the, of these configurations, a Markov chain. When the probability distribution of the full series can be written as the probability of each single one of those independently. Now, in our, my connection is unstable, sorry. I hope it's back. So what does this condition tell us in terms of the sampling that we discussed? Yeah? Well, it is telling us that the probability of observing a given event in our Markov chain is independent on, on its history. Okay? Probability. An event is independent on the history of the series. Now, 
Now, of course, this concept has huge ramifications. Think about master equation, field of open quantum systems, and so on and so forth. But it's also very important for us now because we, we have given a definition of our feature space. In our feature space, we said, okay, look, we want to collect configurations in a way which is statistically independent. Okay? Because it has to, be only a, it has to be only a sample of the probability distribution. So it looks like the configuration that we are searching for are exactly this Markov chains. Okay? It's exactly matching. Perfect match. Of our uh, feature space definition. Independent of this. Oops, there are questions. Are they, uh, just a second. Could you explain a little bit more, maybe with example, what it depends? Uh, yes, I will explain it in the, in the next uh, slide. What's X, the feature space? Some, no, no, it's, a, it's just a collection. In our case, it will be the feature space, but for a market change, it's just a collection of, of, of configurations. Blah. But order, okay? X1, X2, and so on and so forth. Now, this is very nice formal definition. Let us try to understand how we generate a Markov chain in, a, in a something like the, the, the easy model we are thinking of. Markov chain in easing models. Well, uh, here I need to have a bit of a larger many body example. So let me take a, a square lattice. And I will define, I will define Does this mean feature space is memories? Mm, it's a bit different. Is that the feature space is generated by a process which is memoryless. The concept of memory in feature space does not really make sense, okay? But the way it is generated, it is with a process which is memoryless. Is this clear? Okay, cheers. Um, okay, now I want to write down my easy model and I can put spins up, down, up, down, 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 up, down. Okay, suppose that I have a configuration of this type and I'm working at very, very high temperature. Now, we have said it before, at very, very high temperature, all configurations roughly have the same weight, the same probability. So they can be generated arbitrarily by just flipping single spins, okay? So in the idea, if I have a given configuration, this I call, this will be my X1, then my next configuration that I will call X2, I can just obtain by taking a random spin and flipping it. For instance, I can take this guy, this guy, and put it up. 
And then my next step, x3, I can do the same with another spin and flip it. Okay. And I can go on, so on and so forth, by just having to flip single spins, okay? So this, for those of you that are familiar with, is so-called single spin update in, in Monte Carlo methods, okay? And in Metropolis, Metropolis Monte Carlo. Which is good because it's telling us that if we want to generate statistically meaningful samples for very, very high temperatures of the easy model, we can just take configuration and randomly spin flip with a probability essentially one. Uh, one has to write down the corresponding detail balance equation and so on and so forth, but just, to, just that you grab the physics, it's not difficult to generate essentially statistically meaningful. Samples for this model at t larger than tc. Now let us do the same exercise, but not in the high temperature case, but in the low temperature. So we now take T much smaller than TC. And I redraw my spins, even if they're not equal. Who cares? I mean, yeah, no, maybe let me let me raise this completely because then it's a bit more clear what they're doing. There is minus, minus, minus. I don't know what you meant. <laughs> Let us draw our picture again, but now low temperature. So what will happen at low temperature is that most of the spins will be parallel to each other. Not all of them, of course. There will be, from time to time, spins that one can further flip. Okay? For instance, if you look at this plot, and if we propose to flip the spin here, we will likely not flip it in a Monte Carlo method because this will actually increase the energy. So this is unlikely. Even though it is still possible. But if we now propose to flip this spin, this is a spin up surrounded by spin down. So if I flip it, I gain a lot of energy because I'm actually favoring the ferromagnetic state. So this will likely be flipped. Flip. And the same thing can happen. This will be X2 can happen recursively, so you will be able to create local excitations that violate the ferromagnetic state, but at the same time, lower the energy by favoring large ferromagnetic states. So again, also in the T much more than TC, single spin flip are fine. So the simple, the simple Monte Carlo method with simple spin flip will allow us to generate very large data sets in particular in the form of Markov chains at both 
T much larger than TC and T much smaller than TC. Okay. Now the question is very clear. What happens close to TC? Okay. And close to TC, okay, we are very short on time. What happens is that Is some of this. Single spin flip will not be efficient at all. Okay. And the reason why it will not be efficient at all is because what happens close to TC? Okay. So while at very small and very, very low and very high temperature, the correlation length is of order of few lattice sites, so it's very short. At t equal to tc, on it we see the correlation length diverges. This implies that if we modify only local spins, you will take a huge amount of time to actually generate two statistically independent configuration. What we instead need to do, we have to change our configurations at very large scales, which looks impossible. Okay. So this implies need to change configurations at large scales. And I wanted to show you a video of why it is so, okay? Because I think it is more, uh, let me retrieve it, sorry. It's a very nice clip from YouTube, very beautiful. Uh, it's one of the things that you should not be watching before going to sleep because otherwise it stays your, okay. Let me show it to you, just a second. So I have to unshare screen and share it here. Is it possible to give us the link? Sorry? Is it possible? Is it possible to? I, I cannot hear you. Can you please repeat? Sorry. Uh, okay. I said that is it is it possible to give us the link of that video? Sure, 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 sure. I will I will send it to you in a minute. In a minute. Thank you. So can you see the video? Uh, okay. Yes. So these are this is a person that has decided to put a set of snapshots of a Monte Carlo configuration of the easy model as a function of Monte Carlo time. Now the, the critical temperature. And for this model, it's 2.269, blah, blah, blah. It is this stuff here on the bottom, on the top right, uh, is below the critical temperature. Because before, below the critical temperature, the spins are either mostly up or mostly down. Okay? You can see that here you will have mostly red or mostly green. Or oh, everything green, everything red, two green, four green, five green. One red. Okay. So this is the ferro phase. Either you change all the spins or you change one or two, no more. Instead, if you go above TC, for instance, in this case 2.8, it's sufficiently above TC, you will see that the spins are a bit random. Okay. The, they can change, you know, some change here, some change here, some change here. So on and so forth. They don't change by a lot, one by one. Now let us look at what happens at TC. Okay, if we run at TC, you see that there are clusters. There's a clusters of red, cluster of red, cluster of red. They are not single ones. They are really clusters. We move, and the rest is green. Clusters, clusters, clusters. 
clusters. Cluster of green now, cluster of green. So this implies that the physics of the easy model at the transition point and, it, and also in its vicinity, of course, it is not governed by the behavior of single spins like it is in the very high and very low temperatures, but rather the opposite. And this implies that if we try to have a meaningful Markov chain for the easy model, if we try to break it down, there is no hope that we can do that with single spin flips. The formal reason for those of you that are in the known is because something which is called autocorrelation time diverges of the, the of autocorrelation time of the algorithm of single spin flip diverges at the critical point. It's huge, diverges very fast with system size because it is not capturing the correct degrees of freedom. Okay? So in order to fight this, I mean, we would like to study phase transition. So we have to fight this problem. And okay, I ultimately didn't have time to explain to you how we do it. You will read it in the notes. The idea is that we will need specific type of new algorithms that generate Markov chains, not by flipping single spins, but now they flip the new degrees of freedom, which are clusters. So they will be able to flip huge amount of spins that are connected one to each other, one to the other, at the same time with a single move. And this was exactly what was done in this simple YouTube video, actually. And you can write a code of this type with uh, I don't know, 80 lines in Python. It's very simple. You can find also some in, in the internet, of course. And the idea is that this, these algorithms, not only they were fundamental in the 80s and the 90s to actually simulate the easy model. I mean, the easy model at criticality was not really efficiently simulated until 1989, 88, sorry. They are also fundamental nowadays because if we want to generate reasonable and physically interpretable feature spaces of a partition function, we really rely on these algorithms. Questions. Will we see any numerical example about cluster or just the theoretical explanation? You will only see the theoretical explanation, uh, but if you wish, I can point you out. I mean, what I've included in the notes is a video of Werner Kraut lecture notes at ICTP, where he discusses also cluster algorithms. And I, I, I mean, it's discussed also in my notes. Actually, you can write down the algorithm out of my notes. It is very easy. And if some of you is interested, I can also give more information. Of course, it's no problem. No, they are not one done now. Uh, one done now is metadynamics. So it's doing something actually different. You can also use metadynamics to sample efficiently the easy model in 2D, but it is a different thing. But thank you for, uh, for the question. So with this, my lecture today, I think is also a bit out of time and I don't want to take uh, anything. So if maybe there are more questions. Do cluster algorithms rely on knowledge of the other parameter? They rely on knowledge of what is the microscopic degrees of, of, of what are the collective degrees of freedom. They do not immediately rely on the order parameter, however. Cheers. Okay, so if there are no other questions, then um, thank you very much, Marcel, Marcello. And uh, we look forward uh, for the next uh, lecture. Next ah, thank you. And uh, to everybody, if you have more questions, just post them on the Element channel. I've just opened it for questions. Questions related to the course, of course. And I will no, be happy to answer them. No, okay? no, no. Not element. Yet. Sorry? Not all of us has, have Sorry? Element, has invitation for Element yet. I mean, some of us don't have it. Once you enter, you will uh, be able, or you can drop me an email if you have a question. Drop me an email. No, yeah. but still, I would like to be part of the element if, uh, if you could uh, like make it public or something so that we can join. Uh, yes, then. sure, sure. Um, write the secretaries and they will, uh, they will let you in. Okay. Okay. Okay, so thank you. thank you very much. So we take a short break uh, and uh, we reconvene uh, at a uh, quarter past 15 uh, Central European time with uh, Domenica uh, third lecture. Thank you very much.